Fisher for three. Bang! He could. This is the Tom and Jerry Sports Show on All Noise Radio. The noise. The noise. You can't ignore. This is another episode of the Tom and Jerry Sports Show on Old Noise Radio on the Live 365 app. We had a uh, an interesting week of sports. We had uh, the biggest you know news of it was uh, free agency. Like we were saying last week on the show that it was going to start the day that we were actually recording. Yeah. So we're on the seventh day of free agency, and uh, a lot has happened. Since that Monday, a lot of faces in new places. Yeah, look at you, the, <laughs> the rhyming here. Uh, you know, obviously, sure, you guys all know Denver was one of the teams that made the most splashes. Uh, new England made a lot of moves too. I would say those are two, probably the most active, along with Cleveland. You know, you could throw Cleveland there, but from a contender standpoint, you know, those two really, really made a push to get over the top. Absolutely. In terms of they're just know, pretty much just going out, you know, strong arming each other. Really, oh yeah, yeah. Denver really, I mean, really started it off by actually taking a player from New England and yeah. into Leap. So, you know, they gave him, I believe, it was fifty-seven, uh, around twenty something guaranteed. Yeah, obviously, signing Demarcus Ware was another big move for them, but also big in in the checkbook. You know, that's twenty million guaranteed right there. Yeah, that was a, that's that's big for them. Um, you know, we we can kind of go right now. We can go by uh, you know position, and we'll go you know right. we'll go by uh, free agency by position and what teams that are you know that they signed with yeah. and what players are still out there. And uh, you know, going at quarterback real quick, there wasn't that many big names. Just your backup, you know. Yeah, I think the only one that actually became was a starter was uh, Josh McCown. McCown. Yeah, yeah, and you knew he was going to have you know Someone some kind of to, yeah. interest in a starter role because yeah. of what he did with the Bears when Jay Cutler was hurt, and uh, he got that, and he even got a decent deal. I mean, yeah, two years, ten mil with Tampa Bay. And he was named the starter within right, Roy, yeah. three days of you know maybe a day or so of it's uh, got to, know, uh, being signed. Sting for uh, McGloin. Yeah, you know uh, it's tough. It's, it's a tough pill know. to swallow, but you know what? Now He's you can young. get some experience. Yeah, yeah, you can get some experience behind a quarterback that knows how to a veteran. You know, yeah, really. just a veteran yeah. that knows how to deal with the NFL. So yeah. it's a good move. Um, the no, pretty much the number one free agent quarterback is probably Mike Vick and like we were saying I, I think he's going to sign with the Jets yeah. I think that's the team that he's going to sign much, with I think it's down between them and the Raiders yeah and just by choice you would go by Jets yeah. I mean because it's the Raiders <laughs> I mean we could be honest but no like the Jets had a you know good year last year well better than everyone expected so yeah and he can help, you know, Geno Smith, you know, maybe grow a little bit, give him some pointers, some experience, Absolutely. you know. So it would be it would be a good move from his standpoint. Just because they are kind of like the same quarterback. Yeah, so exactly. it, it's it's a good fit for How to deal with that media veteran, and stuff like yeah, that, so. that veteran, you know, you know, I guess presence yeah. and you know to to be can't underestimate, yeah. you know, just having someone to Absolutely. help help teach. Uh Matt Castle signed back with Minnesota for a two year. 10 mil a year deal with I, I mean that's a little much for me I guess but yeah you would, he's obviously going to be a starter it sounds like yeah. for them uh, Tavares Jackson re-signed with the uh, Seattle Seahawks which is good Brandon Whedon is meeting with the Cowboys today which I'm not really happy about but you know yeah whatever but uh, yeah, that, I mean it's not even like you can't even say he's young no he's, he's not yeah. he, he, uh, just because he's he got drafted a few years 30 years old yeah, he's, he's not young <laughs> So uh, we'll move on to running back. Uh, the number one running back on the list was Ben Tate. He just signed uh, with a two-year deal for seven mil with Cleveland. Cleveland got out, you know, pretty yeah, cheap. Yeah, he's actually on that he's a good running back. Yeah, he's actually a really good running back. He's starting to really make a name for himself, and uh, you know, he signed with uh, Cleveland. And Cleveland, and like we were saying, they're one quarterback away from being yeah, a exactly. very, very good team. And uh, Rashad Jennings. Signed with uh, the Giants, four years, 14 mil. Uh, Darren McFadden re-signed with Oakland, one year, 1.75 mil. I'm still trying to understand that a little bit. I mean, yeah. I know he's injury-prone, this and that, but to sign for that little, you yeah. know. 
Uh, Andre Brown's still out there. Noshawn Moreno's still out there. Uh, Maurice Jones-Drew is still out there, who was, was uh, rumored to be uh, in connection with the Jets. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, then a few other, you know, little, you know, little deals here and there with the the running backs. Uh, not many fullbacks have signed yet. Leron McLean's still out there. Greg Jones is still out there. Vontae Leach is still out there. Henry Hynoski re-signed a one-year deal, one mil with uh, the Giants. The dying position. Yeah, it's it a really shame. is. It's a shame, too. It's sad. Um, then we'll go over to uh, wide receivers. Uh, on this list, they have Eric Decker as the number one wide receiver. In my opinion, I don't think he is. No. Uh, I mean, when you're when you're in the the list of you know guys like Jeremy Macklin, Hakeem Nix, uh, Anquan Bolden, Steve Smith, I don't think he's yeah. uh, he's the number he's, one here. He was just a product of Peyton. The yeah. Past he's a good yeah. wide receiver. I he just still a, don't. I don't think he's the number one receiver. No. I honestly don't think. And I mean, he had a decent year when Tebow was his quarterback. Yeah. You give him that, but. He's not a number one, no. Yeah. I don't think he'll ever be a number uh, one. He signed a five-year 36.25 uh, mil with the Jets. <coughs> so, like I said, you know, he wanted to be a number one wide receiver. He wanted number one wide receiver money, and that's what he got with yeah. the Jets. Jeremy Macklin re-signed with Philly one year 5.5 mil. Hakeem Nix, like we said, big splash for uh, Indy, signing one year f- uh 3.5 mil with Indianapolis uh, to go along with Andrew Luck. Like we said, in, uh, Indianapolis is is really uh, yeah. made themselves better definitely with, with uh, this free agency. Uh, Julian Edelman re-signed uh, with New England. Another big move, uh, Golden Tate signing with Detroit, five years, 31 mil. That's that's definitely a good signing. Because uh, you know you could put him in the slot next to Calvin Johnson, it's a it's a problem. Yeah. Steve Smith was released, and uh, the next day or so he uh, signed with Baltimore. Yeah. Good move. Great for, move. Uh, oh, great move. Th- uh, three years, eleven mil with Baltimore to uh, kind of take over that possession uh, receiver mm-hmm. mold that they were missing really yeah. since Anquan Bolden left. And we were talking about it last week. We, were, you know, we said that you know they needed yeah. that wide receiver, and we didn't know if they were going to go for it in in the draft or what. And yeah, they, I always prefer to do it through free agency because yeah. it's guys that are proven, you know, exactly. that, that have exactly. played. Then you know, then that can play in the NFL. You know, some guys just aren't built for. And it. this guy yeah. is definitely proven. Yeah. So I mean, it's great. You know. I always prefer free agency rather than draft just because you know what you're getting out of it. Honestly, I still think this guy has the best hands in the NFL. Yeah, no, I, I can't mean, wait it, to see it's him. A, it's a tough match between him and Larry Fitzgerald, but I still, I, I really do think he has the best yeah. the hands. It's in very it. rare to see him drop it. Yeah. Um, the announcers let you know because, I mean, even they'll be like, whoa, Steve well, Smith just dropped uh, it. Or, or just like the one, the one game against the Giants where he shattered his arm mm-hmm. and still <laughs> caught the ball. Yeah. So it kind of tells you something. Yeah, um, Anquan Bolden re-signed a two-year deal with uh, San Francisco. Good move for them. They needed. Yeah, him definitely. Back. Emmanuel Sanders signed with Denver. A little iffy on this one. Yeah, from a personal standpoint, I guess you'd say, or you know, yeah. how the how he plays in that system. You know, he's going along with uh, Brandon LaFell. No, actually, Brandon LaFell signed with New, yeah, yeah. New England. So, uh, so you know, it, it's a. Uh, we had some big, you know, big names yeah, go, definitely. you know, so far, and we're only through three positions, really. Yeah. Uh, this is the offensive side of the ball. Uh, tight ends. Uh, Jimmy Graham was franchise tagged, and I, I don't think he was really too happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, Can't really blame him either. Especially when uh, they uh, gave the money to uh, some free agents that, yeah, uh, that they brought they in. They cut a lot of people, too, and it yeah. seemed like they were going to you know, lock up Jimmy with that. And but traded they, Darren Sproles. Yeah. They released you know. uh, Roman Harper. Yeah. A couple other guys on the defense. So, you know, interesting to see what happens with that. Yeah. Uh, Dennis Pitta re-signed a five-year deal with Baltimore. Very good move. Yes. Uh, Jermichael Finley is still out there. He is rumored to be in connection with Seattle, so we'll see what happens with that. It looks like the only team interested, actually, which is which is kind of uh, weird because this guy's a very very yeah. Good, it's probably going he down just to has the, the, the his series injuries. that series yeah, not pretty serious one he had last year. Yeah, he's not cleared yet. He's re- yeah, he's not cleared yet. So you know, it's a little uh, you know you got there's there's risk there. I mean, he yes. broke his neck last year. Yeah, so there was that was there was bad. Yeah. 
Uh, Brandon Pettigrew signed with uh, re-signed with the Detroit Lions four years, which is uh, good to bring him back. He's a, he's a very good, yeah. decent. He's a better you know, blocker tight yeah. end than catching, but he's definitely you know. a possession. Uh, yeah, no, he's a good uh, tight end. Good tight end now. Garrett Graham re-signed with Houston. John Carlson signed with Arizona. Brandon Myers signed uh, with Tampa Bay. Scott Chandler re-signed with Buffalo. Andrew Corliss he re-signed with Green Bay. So uh, that probably spells the end of Jermichael Finley going to Green Bay. Mm-hmm. So uh, offensive tackles, Eugene Monroe re-signing five years with Baltimore. Jared Veldier uh, signing with Arizona. Brandon Albert, the biggest move of probably free agency, signing with uh, Miami, five-year, 46 mil. Uh, Anthony Collins signing five years with Tampa Bay. Roger Saffold re-signing five years with uh, St. Louis. You know, this this is just the offensive side of the ball. That's the offensive tackles. We'll go to the offensive guard. Uh, Jeff Swartz re- uh, signs a four-year deal with the Giants, which is a good move for the Giants because yeah. they have a lot of problems on their yes, front line. Yes, they do. Um, Chad Reinhardt re-signed with San Diego. John Asamoah, Asamoah signs with Atlanta. Atlanta got better in the physical part of the game on both sides of the ball. Uh, with each with their front lines, and that was the one thing that they were always missing. They yeah. were kind of soft on defensive line and the offensive. Yeah, they line. never really had a pass rush. Yeah. in uh, the past couple of years. So uh, adding those guys, uh, you know, adding guys like that have that physical sense of uh, football. That's that was big for them. Uh, centers, Alex Mack is still out there. Uh, yeah, but I think it's, I think he's an unrestricted free agent or something like says, that. Like I think he's still. With Cleveland. Next to his name, it says transition tagged. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think I think he still has like a year left or something like that. And, yeah, I, uh, I think it's one of those situations like a team can offer, but then Cleveland can match kind of thing yeah. or something like that. Yeah. But it, and it's a lot of money because it's around like $10 million or something like that he's getting next season. So yeah. it's a lot of money for a center, but... Like we said, it's a, it's a very important position. Yeah, th- that's th- that's definite. You know, we were talking about on the, on the podcast that, you know, the center is is definitely the the unknown. Yeah, you know, diamond in the rough. And really. it's so yeah, it's so under underappreciated. It does everything for a quarterback's comfort. Really, yeah, you know how comfortable a quarterback can get is because of his center. Yeah, your quarterback. You don't want your quarterback going under center and wondering if. You know, and you don't want to yeah, any second you know, questions in his head. Screw up yeah. a, a hike or you know yeah. any kind of snap or whatever, and you know especially you know when you're in the shotgun and you yeah. want to you want to know that you and your mm-hmm. center are on exactly. the same page that he's not going to throw. I mean, look at the look what happened in the Super Bowl. Exactly. You don't want your your center to mm-hmm. toss it over your head. Yeah, that's why I really want the Ravens to make a move on him because we lost that with when we lost Matt Burke. Yeah, and. That was you. I mean, our offensive line was terrible last year. There's yeah. no other way around it. And Matt Burke was a huge reason in that. So and having that know, stability. And the then center. on the other hand, you look at the Cowboys with you know their draft yeah, pick with Travis exactly. Frederick. He changed that whole front line exactly. around. So center is a big part. Just like look your at tackles. the penalties too. Yeah. What they did for you know their respective teams, especially. Yeah. I don't know. I always mix up the names. I believe it was Mike though. The Steelers won. The Steelers center. I mean, he was. Oh uh, yeah. He's one of the, one of the better centers in the league, if yeah. not the best. So. Definitely. And he got his brother drafted <laughs> as high as he did because yeah. they're twins. Exactly. Uh, we're going to take a break. We're going to get into the defensive side of the ball. When we get back, you listen to Tom and Jerry's Sports Show on All Noise Radio on the Live 365 app. Keep it locked. This is my time. Be sure to listen to the Tom and Jerry Sports Show on AllNoiseRadio.com and the Live 365 app Wednesdays and Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern. And welcome back to the Tom and Jerry Sports Show on All Noise Radio and the Live 365 app. Going to switch it over to the defensive side of the ball and, you know, the the most notable free agents on that. Yeah, we had uh, defensive ends. You're looking at Greg Hardy. He re-signed a one-year 13-mil deal with Carolina. 
which he really had a breakout year last year with yes, Carolina. He did. Especially uh, the last couple of games. I believe it was seven sacks in yeah. the last two games. Uh, you had Michael Johnson signed a five-year deal with Tampa Bay, which is a big yeah. move for Tampa Bay. Uh, Lamar Houston signed with Chicago to add to that, you know, always potent defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Bennett re-signed with Seattle. Arthur Jones signed with Indianapolis five years. And, that you know, that's a that's another move, you know, to put on the other side of. Yeah. Uh, to have on the other side of Robert Mathis is No, is yeah, and he had, a, he had a good year last year for Baltimore. Yeah. I mean, he started to become one of my, uh, you know, one of my favorite players on the team. He's he's good. He's a good one. Yeah, he's good. Uh, Everson Griffin re-signed five years with Minnesota. Julius Peppers was released. He signs with his uh, his rival, really. I guess you could say uh, signing with Green Bay, thirty mils uh, over three years, which is the same deal as Demarcus Ware, just different guaranteed. Yeah. Uh, Jared Allen still out there. Uh, Justin Tuck, which uh, kind of uh, kind of. St- Picked up some storm, I guess, uh, yeah. between the Giants and. Well, you and know, he's got his two rings. Yeah, it's time to make money. Yeah, That's how you can't blame I guess the guy. He, yeah, I guess you, know? you can say that. Uh, he signed a two-year, eleven mil deal with Oakland after the Giants offered him pretty much uh, two years, six mil. I think it was. Or yeah, five so I mil. mean, there you go. So right he, got, he, he got he got you know, a lot more. He's living in beautiful California rather yeah. than Jersey. Yeah, it's a win-win. He's got his rings. Exactly. So, uh, Red Bryant, like we said earlier, uh, yeah. last week, we knew that already. Mm-hmm. Uh, Red Bryant signed with Jacksonville. I mean, any player that's from Seattle is just flocking yeah. to Jacksonville because of the old defensive coordinator, obviously, exactly. Gus, Gus Bradley. Uh, defensive tackle, we got Henry Melton still out there. He's meeting with the Cowboys today, uh, Monday. Uh, so, probably by the time you listen to this show, he probably will be signed by either hin- uh, either Dallas or Seattle. Actually, not even Seattle. I think it's Dallas, Chicago, Seattle. You know, there's a bunch of teams yeah. in on him. No, he's a very good player, though. Yeah. Very good defensive tackle. Uh, Linville Joseph uh, signed a five-year big deal, 31.5 mil with uh, Minnesota. B.J. Raji re-signed with uh, Green Bay one year, four mil. Jason Hatcher uh, went to the, ri- the, the yeah. NFC East rival, uh, Washington Redskins, four years, 27.5 mil. Uh my my problem with Jason Hatcher is he had one year. That was it. Yeah, you but know, he got paid over just one year. That's what the Redskins do, though. Yeah, and I mean, what what ha- like yeah he was he was always a good player, but it it fi- like he finally, you know, had one good year, and you know now he's getting yeah no, twenty seven point five. He's, gonna, he he's gonna do that again because yeah. when he's already gotten paid exactly. You know, you know, that's so I don't know. Uh, then you got the outside linebackers, uh, Demarcus Ware. Like we said, three years, thirty mil. Uh, depending on the, what what is Denver? Denver runs a four three or three four. I think it's a four three. I think they moved to a four three, didn't they? Because Von Miller's now Von Miller's. Yeah, in. that's what I was trying to like put the pieces together. I think they used to be a three four and had yeah. him rushing. Yeah, but I, now I think now he's, he's permanently on. Yeah, the now edge. he's got his hand yeah. in the ground. All right, so then you have Demarcus Ware and Von Miller with their hand in the ground. Now. Yeah. So uh, Demarcus Ware will be a defensive end with Denver, depending on you know we don't know for sure if they're three four or four three. If they are a three four, either way, be, yeah. you're having Von Miller and Demarcus Ware yeah, coming at exactly. you. Yeah, exactly. It's as simple as that. Exactly. Brian Arakbo is franchise tagged, which we told you last week. Um, and you know Calvin Pace resigned with the Jets, which was big. Lamar Woodley signed with Oakland, which was a good move for Oakland. Yeah. Oakland's starting to get a little bit better. Got a couple, you know, of, you know nice defensive prices inside they there. They had, they had the most money. That's you know, that's what it'll do. Yeah, exactly. But it, you know, they're decent signings though. Actually, you know, yeah, they're proven not, type players. They're not young per se, but but they're not going crazy with. Yes, with exactly. The signings. They they're can being smart with it. Yeah, they they're limiting what they're doing. They're helping their locker room also with yeah. you know the veterans. So definitely, you know, kudos to them. They're not. Going too crazy, yeah, which they always tend to do, and they're they're picking up Super Bowl winners, yeah. You know, so Lamar it's Woodley, yeah, Justin no, they're Tuck, they're smart so. moves actually for once. Uh, inside linebacker, you're looking at Donald Butler signed with uh, San Diego, seven years, fifty one mil. Uh, Carlos Dansby signed with Cleveland. Like we said, Cleveland was just making moves here yeah. and there. That one is probably the most iffy, just because of age and breaking news as it comes to me now, which I'm not very happy with. 
uh, the Cowboys reach an agreement with former Browns quarterback Brandon Whedon. <laughs> Yippee. Um, Dequell Jackson signed with Indianapolis. Another big move for Indianapolis yeah, to you know yeah. make them better. John Beeson resigns with the Giants, which was huge because they he, changed, that. Yeah. he changed that uh, linebacking core around for them. Daryl Smith resigned with Baltimore, which was big for Baltimore. Yeah, it's much needed. Uh, then uh, you know we go to the cornerbacks, which was uh, big names all around. Uh, Darrell Revis, which was uh, he was released. Early, uh, at later in the week, he re- he signed a one year deal with New England, which uh, you know kind of makes New England's defense a lot better now. The only problem with uh, I have with their defense is uh, the pass rush, as I said before, and they also uh, their two corners are press corners. Yeah. So if they get beat, you know, they're looking at a pretty bad situation, and that also is an effect with the the lack of pass rush that they could have. Because with two press corners, it if you have a bad pass rush, you know, you're giving more time to the wide receiver to get away from the corner. So there's a couple problems with that, but you know what? We'll see how it plays out. Yeah, uh, you know, like like we said, we they added uh, Brandon Browner with Darrell Revis. So you know, like you said, they they're press. Yeah, yeah. But so, they're big, you know, yeah. cornerback. So you know, we'll see what happens with that. Brent Grimes resigned with Miami. Uh, to go across from Cortland Finnegan now. Mm-hmm. Grimes uh, is actually a good corner, too. Yeah. He's a good corner. Uh, Akeem Tlaib signed with Denver. Like, it was one of those big deals that mm-hmm. we were talking about with Denver. Uh, Alteron Werner, which was probably the biggest uh, cornerback before Darrell Revis was uh, released. Yeah. He signs with Tampa Bay. Vontae Davis re-signs with Indianapolis, which was huge because they needed they needed him yeah. back. He he was a, a big part of their defense last year. Um, Dominique Rogers Camardi is uh, is still out there. He took physicals with the Jets and the Giants. We're waiting to see what happens. Uh, from what we're hearing, the Browns are sneaking into that. So we'll see what happens with that. Sam Shields re-signs with Green Bay, which was the first signing. Uh, Seems like a lot of, of money too. Yeah, set, kind of set the bar for corners. Exactly, he set the he really did set the bar. He had four years, thirty nine mil. Uh, like we said, uh, keep Talib got a six year, fifty seven mil. Grimes got a four year, thirty two mil. Yeah, so you can uh, see it's kind of all based around yeah. that Sam Shields deal. Werner got a four year, twenty five mil. So uh, you know this is that was a that was a big thing with uh, the cornerbacks. Uh, Walter Thurman signs with the Giants. One of, I mean, maybe two signings that they made. Yeah. Uh, Charles Tillman re-signed with Chicago. Good Anto- for them, though. And Antonio then. Cromartie's still out there, but uh, there was a little Twitter uh, you know, conversation going on with him and Patrick Peterson talking about you know connecting yeah. in Arizona, and it's looking like he probably will end up in Arizona. Uh, Terrell Brown signed a one-year deal with Oakland. Captain Munnerlyn signed a de- uh, three-year deal with Minnesota. D'Angelo Hall re-signed with uh, Washington. Corey Graham signed with Buffalo. So those are those are the big the big news with the yeah. cornerbacks. Then we could go to safety. Uh, Jarius Bird, probably the biggest yeah. out of them, uh, signed a big deal. Six years, 54 mil with New Orleans. And this, is, was the, this, yeah. is, the, this is like the... The signings that we were talking about with mm-hmm. Jimmy Graham, like they kinda, get, they're giving you have him, an issue now. Yeah, yeah, they're giving him fifty-four mil. You lock up a guy that wasn't on your team, and you yeah. don't lock up a guy that's you know done everything for your team. Pretty much the biggest part of your team. Yeah, so that's other than Drew Brees, obviously. So. But I mean, that's not got to sit well with Jimmy. Yeah, uh, T.J. Ward signing a four-year deal with Denver. Like we said, that mm-hmm. you know that just adds to their their defense. Uh, Dante Whitner signed with Cleveland. And uh, like we said, Cleveland's Cleveland's yeah. getting better, and Cleveland uh, added big tools to that defense yes, this year, uh, to a defense that's already that was top five. Yeah. I believe. So, Antoine Bethea uh, signed a four year deal with San Francisco, which is, which is good move for uh, San well, yeah, Francisco because of you know the guy you just said, that, yeah, Dante you know, Whitner leaving. Just, yeah, they just replaced him. So, uh, uh, Malkin Jenkins signed with Philly. Stevie Brown resigned with the Giants. Michael Mitchell signed with Pittsburgh. Nate Allen re-signed with uh, Philly, so that will. Pr- oh, and then I mean, you got the kickers and. Yeah, but uh, big news with the kicker would be Vinatieri going back. Yeah. To uh, Indianapolis and uh, 
Stephen Hauschka signed a nice deal with Seattle. <laughs> Three years, 9.15. Uh, Good nine. for him. Yeah. Deserved it. I mean, that's a got to be a tough place to kick over there with all yeah. the weather and everything like that. And, you know, he's actually done a, he also, had a shaky start to his career. I believe he started with the yeah. Redskins, I believe, or something like that. I think it was something like yeah, that, and been. had a shaky start. So it's good to, yeah. you know, find some stability as a kicker. And Nick Folk getting a four-year, twelve mil for uh, for the Jets. So yeah. getting some uh, see, uh, getting I some see something like that. Probably a little more for Tucker because he's the best kicker yeah. in the league, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, you know that will do it for the defensive side of the ball, and pretty much all of the free agents uh, still out there, though. You know, there's a few. You know, like yeah. we said, Henry Melton's still out there. Uh, Max still out there. Maurice Jones Drew is still out there. Yeah, and he was uh, rumored to be with the Jets. So, you know, we'll we'll see. You know, there's a lot. You know, this time next week out. we'll be saying all these guys probably <laughs> signed somewhere. Yeah, you know, pretty much. How this goes? Yeah, I mean, uh, Mike Vick, you probably won't see for a little while. Yeah. Uh, he's gonna take his time. It, you know, he's towards the end of his career. He wants to sign with a team that he's gonna end it with. And uh, yeah, pretty much. you know, at least be a starter, you know, over there. And uh, like we said, I think the Jets will be that team because he can, um, he can be that that player that, you know, what if Geno Smith doesn't play well in whether it be mm-hmm. preseason or the first two games, or he you know, even gets hurt or something. Yeah. yeah, it's always good to have something. Yeah, something there. And I I don't know if he's going to be able to get a team that he's going to go right in and start with. That's yeah. Uh, the only so, team unmentionable would probably be Oakland. Yeah. And I, I think the Jets would be a better team for him. Yeah, I think he feels that too. Even though, you know, Oakland did make a couple of nice signings, as we said, on the defense, brought in a couple of champions, but there's still a lot of pieces away, obviously, from... Yeah. You know, the Jets are too, but there's a little more stability, I guess you could say, in the Jets. Yeah. You know... You know, especially you know, adding Eric Decker now. Yeah. You know, that's a, That would be a good, n- nice little weapon for... Whoever the quarterback for, Yeah, be. Mike Vick, if he goes in there with, uh, you know, or Geno Smith, who knows? You know, we don't know how Geno Smith's going to play this year. He did, uh, you know, break a record for uh, a rookie uh, for interception or turnovers. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I still think he had a decent year. Though. No, he did. I mean, as the quarterback's the most important position, and they still don't win 8-8, eight eight, you know. Yeah. And obviously, they I know they have – one of the top defenses just because of Rex Ryan, but Gino did make plays last year. Yeah. You know, there were some throws that, you know, and he impressed had, a lot of people. He had, what, three comeback wins? Yeah. In, you know, in the season. So that alone right there kind of yeah. shows, you know, just the intangible to win, you know, just that that it factor in a way, you know, exactly. just to want to get the job done. Exactly. Because that's what you want. Well, we're going to take a break. Uh, when we get back, we're going to get into, uh, you know, Sunday, uh, selection Sunday We'll give you the bracket And uh, you know Maybe some predictions Here and there uh, You're listening to Tom and Jerry Sports Show On All Noise Radio On the Live 365 app Keep it locked Be sure to listen to The Tom and Jerry Sports Show On All Noise Radio Dot com And the Live 365 app Wednesdays and Fridays At 5pm Eastern <laughs> And welcome back to the Tom and Jerry Sports Show on All Noise Radio and the Live 365 app. Yesterday was uh, Selection Sunday, one of the biggest days of the year, obviously, in the, in the sporting world, at least. Yeah, this is uh, one of the biggest sporting events. Yeah. You know, probably... You one know, of my favorites, to, yeah, personally. Definitely. Uh, you know, next to, you know, I guess you could say the Super Bowl and stuff like yeah. that. Um, you know, it, it's fun to... Uh, keep up with uh, all these games and you know selection sunday is just you know a fun hour yeah of uh you know just finding out what teams will be playing against each other and usually it's you know this this past week was uh the championship week so that, you know that's kind of like the start of it yeah really. all the conferences play each other uh and it's like the start of yeah you know definitely uh you know march madness and i guess you can say this is official this is officially March Madness. Yes, it is. Uh, it is. It's here. I mean, yeah. the games start Tuesday. Technically, the, uh, the you know first games. couple playing the, games. There's but four playing games. It really starts. The action really starts Thursday. Yeah, 
that's one it's just basketball after basketball and it's really fun i guess especially in where we're from because yeah. we don't have those big <coughs> college programs particularly yeah. you know especially in basketball really in any sport but you know it, it's probably more fun for us than say fans of you know teams because they're obviously rooting for just them but yeah. you know around here we kind of do this for, for fun you're yeah. rooting for your bracket yeah that's, we, yeah that's exactly so you know the bracket's f- a lot of fun in uh I guess you could say in the Northeast region yeah. because we don't have those, like a powerhouse team or anything like that. So it's really fun to just do your bracket and, you know, just see what happens. Yeah. It's, that's why this tournament is so much so exciting to watch because you're rooting for teams you never rooted for or never even heard of or players you never heard of. Yeah. And it just creates all this excitement and, you know, you you, you, you pick certain upsets <laughs> in your bracket, you know, and you're pulling for them. It's just... That's what makes it is what it is. And, you know, after uh, watching the uh, Selection Sunday, you know, seeing who's playing who and everything, and, like, you know, I've been I've been thinking about it. You know, I've been thinking about who I wanted to win Yeah. for the last maybe month or so. Mm-hmm. And it's just it, – it's it's tough this year because there's really not that one team yeah. that's, that's dominant. And I guess you could say maybe Florida. Florida's been looking the best. But um, even at that, I mean – I remember saying this in the beginning of the best college basketball season. That there's just no powerhouse like there usually yeah. is, like Kentucky in recent years yeah. with their Anthony Davis teams and stuff like that. There's no clear cut favorite. It's yeah. that's what's going to make this. I think one of the best tournaments ever. Yeah, and uh, you know we'll we'll go over the brackets right now. You got um, in the south bracket. You got Florida against uh, either Albany or Mount St. Mary's. You got Colorado at the eight against Pittsburgh nine. You got VCU at five against SF Austin at twelve. UCLA at four. Uh, Tulsa at thirteen. Ohio State at six. Dayton at eleven. Syracuse at three. Fourteen. Uh, Western Michigan. New Mexico at seven with Stanford at ten and Kansas at uh, at the two and Eastern Kentucky at. At fifteen, so this is a. Um, I feel like it, it's going to end up being the one and twos <clears throat> going up against uh, each other in this in this bracket going into the lead eight. Um, just because I, I feel like it's it's kind of a weaker bracket. Yeah, you know, Syracuse I think is just going to fall apart uh, because they've been falling apart pretty much mm-hmm. the the yeah the tail past, end like, month, of. I guess uh, you could say. Uh, then you got you know Ohio State, who's always a choker, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know Pittsburgh will be there. They'll they'll get you know decent. You know they'll get far at least. You know I just feel like Florida and Kansas will probably take this this bracket to the end. Um, then uh, we'll go to the the uh, West Conference, uh, the West bracket, which is the top right if you're looking at the bracket. You got Arizona at one. Weber State at 16, Gonzaga at 8, Oklahoma State at 9, Oklahoma at 5, North Dakota State at 12, San Diego State at 4, New Mexico State at 13, Baylor at 6, Nebraska at 11, Creighton at 3, Louisiana Lafayette at 14, Oregon at 7, BYU at 10, and Wisconsin at 2, and uh, American at 15. Yeah, so, eight, eight or nine matchups <coughs> usually my favorite because yeah, those it's just, are always my favorite. Yeah, the first it's the first round and you're getting an even matchup in terms of you know rating and stuff like that. So you know we're gonna we're gonna look at the East bracket now and that's that's the bottom left if you're taking a look at the the sheet. We got Virginia, obviously the one seed, playing Coastal Carolina as the sixteen. Next we have uh, Memphis in the eight playing George Washington. In the I think nine. that's gonna be a good game. Yeah, the, that's gonna be Memphis is a. Pretty good team, pretty young team. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see how they fare in the tournament. But, uh, yeah, I, I do agree with you. I think that will be a very good game as the 8-9 uh, matchup, as we are yeah. just talking about. Then you have Cincinnati as the 5 seed playing Harvard, which is another good game. And Harvard's one of those teams, like, you think it's Ivy League, you know, they'll just get blown out because it's, you know, smart kids, whatever. But, I mean, don't be surprised if Harvard makes that upset there. Yeah. They're actually a very good basketball team. Definitely. And another uh, favorite in the tournament, Michigan State, is a four seed playing Delaware. Then you got North Carolina as a six, playing Providence as the eleventh. Just t- <coughs> going to be a tough matchup for uh, North Carolina. This isn't your typical, you know, North Carolina. This was yeah. actually kind of like a rebuilding year for them. So 
you know, to even be a six seed at that is very good for him. Then you have a, a very underrated Iowa State team at three, playing uh, North Carolina Central. I think Iowa State's going to make a run in this. I think yeah. they're a very balanced team, very good team. Then you have a seventh seed Connecticut playing the tenth St. Joseph's. That's going to be another good game, I yeah. think. Then you have t- uh, two seed Villanova. No, they're kind of underrated, definitely underappreciated underrated. team. Yeah, I feel like they're uh, they're going to make a run. Yeah, you know. Definitely, and so. their uh, their first round matchup is against Milwaukee. Yeah, and uh, now this, we're this is definitely um, the uh, the toughest bracket here. Yeah, Wichita State kind of got a tough draw here as yeah. their, their one seed in the uh, Midwest bracket. That are obviously the one seed playing the winner of Cal Poly and Texas Southern as a 16 seed. This should be fun. This this bracket, this whole bracket should be yeah, fun to, to watch. See how this all plays yeah. out, and uh, another good matchup. Eight and nine is Kentucky and Kansas State. This is going to be probably that's going to be a good game. Eight yeah. and nine games. Oh yeah, they usually are. Yeah, as we said, definitely my favorite in yours. Then you have uh, St. Louis and the five C playing twelve NC State or Xavier. For some reason, five and twelves are usually pretty good too. Yeah. I always keep my eye out for those. That's usually one of my upset picks. Is a twelve the five and five? 12, yeah. yeah. Then uh, Louisville. Now the, the the favorite to win the tournament actually is Louisville. In the four seed playing Manhattan, you know, tough draw for our. Uh, yeah, is that Manhattan. our Manhattan or Kansas Manhattan? It might be the Kansas Manhattan. Yeah, I don't know what. I don't even think any true local teams would be in there besides Albany, as we mentioned in yeah. the South. But uh, you know, we'll get back into this. Massachusetts who had a very good year as a six seed playing either the, playing the winner of Iowa uh, or Tennessee as the eleven seed. Which I've never understood. I talked to you about that off the air. Yeah. How an 11 seed is the plan. But, okay, we'll let it slide. Then Duke is the 3 seed playing the 14th seed Mercer. Then Texas at the 7th playing Arizona State, which I think would be a good game too. And then I, Michigan I, at versus Wofford, the 2 and 15s. Going back to the Manhattan, it might be our Manhattan. Oh, okay. Honestly, so because, I mean, they're... Uh, they're playing teams like Quinnipiac, yeah, uh, Iona, mm-hmm. uh, Siena, Ryder. I, I feel like this is a yeah. I think yeah, and they probably won their conference area. tournament or something like that, and yeah. got it. Yeah, so you know it'll be fun seeing that them get blown out by Louisville, <laughs> but <coughs> they made a good yeah, run. Yeah, they, uh, they beat Iona. There you in go. The championship. Okay, so yeah, that's you know it's semi-local for us. Yeah, a lot closer than Albany, but you know that was that was your Midwest brackets and. You know, one thing I pointed out before was Duke always seems to play so close to home. Yeah. Every tournament, you know, and usually the first round, obviously. And, you know, you know they're the three seed, but they're playing in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's <laughs> their back door. Yeah. I mean, like, it's their backyard. So I, I, can, I have a little issue with that. I mean, <laughs> you know, I root for Duke. They're my favorite college basketball team. Just from being a kid and always seeing Duke, Carolina, but yeah. you know, we gotta stop. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, Duke will will probably get to the Sweet Sixteen. Sweet at most. Sixteen, yeah. I mean, unless Jabari Parker, like we talked about before, is like that potential to just take over. Yeah, I guess you could say he does too. Maybe not as much as Wiggins, but as long as he could stay out of foul yeah. trouble, you know, that's you know, lately that's that's been a little bit of a problem. But yeah. Uh, if he could stay out of foul trouble and he could really take over, he can really take over a team. Yeah, so, no, absolutely. Uh, but, you know, and that was like what we were talking with Kansas. Kansas, you know, Kansas, yes, is is a very very good team, but it's just you know, how are they going to do without their star center? Yeah, you know, without Joel Embiid, you know, with a back injury and you know him being out probably for, you know, maybe the first. Maybe two games that they go through. Yeah, uh, it might be a it and then, might you be know, tough being for them. Shaky when he comes back, yeah, you know, rusty and all that. Can't really afford to so be rusty. And they're gonna they're gonna lean a lot on uh, Andrew yeah, Wiggins for definitely. Kansas. So you know, but I mean, the best part about this is as we were saying, there's no clear cut. You're above everyone else. Yeah. That like you can kind of guarantee in the final four. I mean, yeah, you have your teams, obviously. Yeah. Like your Louisville, Michigan State, and uh, Florida; those are your top three. Yeah. But you can't really say 
are, they're guaranteed to be there. Yeah. And that's that's what makes this what it is and makes it as exciting as it is. is all the upsets, it's one game elimination. I mean, literally anything can happen. See, I, like I really like which uh, Wichita State just because they're a, a great all-around team. They, yes, they, they are. They, they're probably the most overall. They, they can they can shoot the three. Team. They can you know throw into the post. Yeah. They can play defense, and you know I just feel like they 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 caught a a tough little yeah, uh, so yeah, bad luck here with with being in the the best bracket. Really, I mean when you're looking at teams like Kentucky, uh, you got St. Louis in there, Louisville. Duke, Texas, yeah. Michigan, you know you're 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 in a tough That's bracket. Tough, yeah. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna be going into tough games, and I mean, thirty four and zero, great season, great season. Like we were saying, you know, no matter what, you you know, strength of schedule or nothing. You, That's yeah. You, you know, thirty four and zero is still a you're, great season, and they're the Super Bowl, you know, yeah. on everyone's schedule, yeah. the whole year, and they still beat everyone. Exactly. So, so you know, it's. It's going to be nice to see, like, or interesting to see how they come into this, uh, you know, into this tournament here. They're always, you know, they've been the last couple of years, they've been there at the Sweet 16 or the yeah. Elite Eight. They, last know, they, year was the Final Four, yeah. you know, almost so, actually beat Louisville yeah. in the Final Four. So, I mean, they're... So, the team and and they're better this year. Yeah, exactly. that's that's the thing. So you know, just you know, just watch out for Wichita State. I mean, that's that's going to be a tough team for anybody to play in this in this tournament. And uh, you know, I, I like Wichita State yeah, a lot. I'm, I, I I'm really pulling do. for them in a way. I, you know? Yeah, just like that underdog kind yeah. of. Like, yeah, yeah. You I mean, know, they they're that. You know, obviously they're 34 and 0, and they were they're a number one seed this year. But just still, you know. People are doubting them. Yeah, you know, just because of their their you know, schedule just and everything. Appreciate it in a way, you know, seeing an undefeated team. Exactly. You know, what if they make a run and win it all? Yeah, as undefeated. I mean, are you not going to give them credit because of their <laughs> exactly. regular season? You know, it makes no sense. That's so. a great season. But um, we're going to take a break. We're going to get into uh, more of our predictions. I guess yeah. you could say for um, you know, and more of um information on the bracket. Uh, you're listening to Tom and Jerry Sports Show on Old Noise Radio on the Live 365 app. Keep it live. You would never catch me in the lie. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. Phone whips is all I drive. Be sure to listen to the Tom and Jerry Sports Show on AllNoiseRadio.com and the Live 365 app Wednesdays and Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern. And welcome back to Tom and Jerry Sports Show on All Noise Radio and Live 365 app. You know, maybe we'll do a we'll do a couple of predictions for you here. Teams that we think will advance to. We'll say we'll, we'll put teams in like the uh, Sweet 16 Sweet here. Sweet 16, yeah. You know, make it try to help you guys out there if you're, you know, low low on information or knowledge. Knowledge, you know. I mean, to be honest with you, you I'm not I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I don't really watch that much yeah. uh, college basketball, but um, I mean, I, I I honestly watch it more than the NBA because I find it more interesting than the NBA. Yeah, more just because the crowd's into it more. Everyone seems There's to be more into of that it more. momentum yeah. feel to it. Like it, momentum in you know in the tournament and NCAA games yeah. compared to uh, you know the NBA is totally different yeah. because you're you're looking at the top players ever in the United States, you know, playing against each other in the NBA. You could be down by, you know, 25. You're not going to get you're not yeah. going to catch up to that. Mm-hmm. In in college basketball, you could be up by 20 and all of a sudden, yeah. you know, one guy hits one shot yep. and they, that momentum changes. It's a, yeah, and no, that's, that's a, it's a great point. And so that's what I love about I actually I do probably like college basketball more than the NBA, and that's why I don't really see it, have like a favorite, like when my thing, yeah, NBA well, team. Well, my thing with uh, college basketball is I don't have that favorite team, and it's kind of uh, you know when I don't have like you know it, 
I'll watch the the bracket and the, the tournament yeah. and everything because I have something on the line. Mm-hmm. Like I have my bracket. I'm I'm rooting for yeah, teams. Yeah, yeah, I got you. So it, it's easier to do that. You know, with the NBA, like I have the Lakers. Like I I root for the Lakers, yeah. and that's it. Mm-hmm. So it, it's tough for me to watch. You know, something like that and. You know, a lot of most of the time, not a lot of these games are on TV. Like you'll have the big team, the big yeah. teams mm-hmm. on. But I mean, like if you're if you're looking at the South bracket, um, like I was saying before, I, I just feel like Florida and Kansas are gonna just take this bracket to the end. Uh, and I know how cliche it is, you know, picking a, a one and a two seed. Yeah. But I just feel in this bracket, I feel like this is probably the weakest bracket, if not uh, the West, maybe. No, I'm. Yeah, this Florida one is a little bit iffy, I guess you could say. Cause yeah. You have the teams that we mentioned that kind of break your heart. Yeah. Always seem to break your heart in Syracuse, Ohio State. Pittsburgh. But, you know, I do I do kind of see UCLA could make a very, yeah, very possible run here. They could. VCU, VCU yeah. yeah they're, VCU. They're, just, they're just that team that always That's seems always to make there, a run yeah. with Shaka Smart as the coach. Yeah. So, you know, they're another team to watch out for. But that would be that would be an interesting matchup because in the second round, VCU and UCLA would UCLA, be playing each yeah. other. So, you know, we'll see what happens with that. I don't think Florida would want to play really either one of those teams. I mean, those are just teams that are especially that VCU. They're momentum, just yeah, they're man. just built for the tournament. Yeah. It seems VCU. I mean, they're just always there. Shaka Smart's one of the best coaches in the country. So yeah, you know, give it up to give it up to them, but. I, I think I agree with you on Kansas just because of the Andrew Wiggins factor. Yeah. I think he makes that much of a difference. Just to carry through the Sweet 16, that's what we're talking about here, yeah. you know. Just to get to, to, through those games, you know, it's really not that hard for a one or a two seed because you're playing, you know, not the best teams. We can admit it. Yeah. You know, you're not getting into the best competition at that point. Yeah. But, you know, anything can happen. I wouldn't be surprised if UCLA made it. As you said, VCU, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Syracuse, See, I kind it, of expect an early exit from them. I don't know what it is. Now, with me, like, I, I feel like um, I feel like my upset could be in the first round here with Dayton and Ohio State. Okay. I feel like that can be that can be a a nice little upset. Yeah. No, I, I could just totally see that myself, too. It's, um, Ohio State always lets you down. Yes. Yeah, always. Always. But uh, going into the West bracket, I mean, uh, Arizona had a great year. Yeah, and I think they're just going to keep rolling. Yeah. They're going to roll right through the Sweet 16. Uh, Gonzaga's out there. Gonzaga, Gonzaga or... I think they have a tough matchup because they, Oklahoma they, State was such a highly rated team in the beginning of the year. Yeah. Then injuries and the whole market smart thing. But I think they're finally starting to play, you know, the kind of basketball they've ex- expected to play all yeah. year. Yeah. So I do expect big things out of them. I think they will make it to the Sweet 16. Yeah. I could see them actually beating Arizona. I, I really would, do. Would. Because, you know, it's all about playing at the right time. And, exactly. And, you know, same thing with Super Bowls and everything like that. That's exactly what they did. And I think Oklahoma State is one of those teams right now. Yeah. Um, then you got uh, San Diego State. Very good defense. A, very, very good, good defensive team. team. Um, Baylor and Nebraska, that's going to be a good game. Uh, Creighton, I, I feel they're like just some, interesting to watch. Yeah. Because simply because of Doug, Doug McDermott. McDermott. Uh, I feel like they can make a little run for it. Uh, it was a tough loss against Providence. for, yeah. for the uh, the, the Big with East the, championship but. with them is if they play bigger teams, that's when they, they run into yeah. problems because McDermott, I believe, is the power forward for them or center, either one. Yeah, and you know you're asking a lot of your best player to go get rebounds. You know, fight bigger guys yeah. all game. He's not going to be able to. You know, give and you as much on the offensive side. They struggle with offensive rebounds because yes. of him being that that shooter. Yes, exactly. You know, not you know he can post up, but he's not he's not the greatest at yeah. posting up. So, you know that that's where they can run into a little bit of problems. Oregon and BYU is going to be a great game. I feel yeah. like very uh, uh, high offense. High pa- yeah, high yeah. pace. Uh, then Wisconsin, I feel like can. Uh, Make it to the Sweet Six. I feel like Wisconsin. Yeah, make they're it another the break your heart team. Yeah. Wisconsin very. Whenever they play someone around the same talent level as them or better, they always seem to lose. So I wouldn't lean too much on Wisconsin if I was you out there. Yeah, you know, kind of stay away from them, especially past the Sweet Sixteen. But you know, now we'll go into the Midwest. 
the this Wichita is, this, State one? I think we should go into this last, though. I think we should get into the East okay. one real All quick. Right. Um, you know, Virginia is is running on a high. Uh, I can almost put them high momentum. I almost feel right like now. putting them right into the elite eight, yeah, just because of the type of the team they are, the scrappiness about them. Uh, Memphis, I mean, Memphis has got a tough draw because they'll be going up against uh, yeah. Virginia if they win. So, uh, Cincinnati and Harvard is going to be a great game. I that's my that's my upset right there. Yeah, is Harvard over Cincinnati? Like I said, I always kind of pick like a twelve to a five. For my upset, and that's the one. This, that's the one this year. I think is yeah. Harvard over Cincinnati. Harvard is actually a very good team, despite the whole Ivy League thing and them being Harvard. They're actually a very good basketball team. I feel like the North Carolina Providence game is going to be a good one. Yeah, and I, I mean, that Prov- would be another upset. I want to be surprised to see. Yeah, like Providence really wasn't. I mean, Providence was probably one of those, you know, bubble teams kind of. Yeah. And just because they won, you know, the the yeah, Big East exactly, championship, yeah. uh, kind of just automatically. Yeah, put but them you know, in. catching fire at the right time. But like yeah, saying. I mean, that's you know, all, beating Creighton. Yeah. Uh, so that that was riding the momentum. Yeah, exactly. And North Carolina didn't play that well in yeah you know, exactly in their tournament. So and like we said before, I mean, kind of like a rebuilding ish yeah. year. You know, they're a very young team. So to even be a six seed, you know, shout out to them. And like we were saying, Iowa State's very good team. They're a very good team. Uh, we'll, They're going to we'll, make a run. Yeah, we'll They're put gonna, them in the, the Sweet They're 16. definitely making a run. Yeah. Um, and Villanova, like I said, Villanova yeah. is my, you know, my, I guess, diamond in the rough in this. in this. Uh, no, I'm going to say that Villanova's definitely will be in the Sweet 16. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll go to the toughest bracket of them all, uh, Wichita State. I, I really love Wichita State. I do too. I, I mean, I... I There's just something about this team that makes the they make you want to root for them. Yeah, you know? exactly. And uh, you know, I feel like they can beat Kentucky or K- Kansas State. I feel yes, like they I can. Know, do I that. would agree. Definitely. Uh, a St. Louis. Oh my! And they, that's tough because they're gonna have to play Louisville. Louisville, yeah. And so, I feel like that's gonna be a great game, though. No, I, 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 really, I would agree. The and four and the five. I think that's gonna be a great game if they play each I'm, other. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Louisville there. Yeah. So you know, I expect Wichita versus Louisville, which is that's and an even great. tougher draw yeah. for Wichita State. Um, uh, Duke. I, I feel like they can make it to the Sweet 16. I don't know if they're gonna make it out of the Sweet 16. I'm, I'm going. I'm going Massachusetts here. Call me really? Crazy. I'm gonna. Take Massachusetts over Duke, I think. Really? I think that's going to happen. I think Duke is not that good of a team. They've been yeah. kind of running on Jamari, I don't wanna, I'm, uh, can't Jamari think of, Parker. Well, yeah, and they're just always overranked yeah. because they're Duke. They're Duke, yeah. They're always staying in the top 25. They're always going to get at the top seed yeah. in, in, the, in the tournament. So I don't call it as much as an upset as maybe other people would just because they're not – their typical Duke, you know, yeah. and uh, you know Michigan. I mean, watching them against Michigan State, it kind of uh, kind of made me question. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if say Texas yeah. made it to the Sweet Sixteen, sweet, uh, sixteen over them. Yeah, so. um, yeah, I'm gonna. I would pick Texas in that. They're going against Arizona State as I'm looking at it, and Michigan versus Walford. Yeah, and they would be versing each other. So, I wouldn't. That's the matchup I expect is Texas versus Michigan. And, you know, anything can happen. And yeah, I would lean toward Texas just because someone more of a known head coach, you know, more yeah. stable, and you know, in Barnes. So good coach. You know, we'll see what happens. I'll, I'm going to go with Texas there. And uh, now, you know, to watch these games, these games, uh, oh, yeah, they're the, everywhere. Last, the last two years, um, they signed on with a lot of channels yeah. to uh, show these games because I used to be able to just like sit down and have like all the games on my computer and then have one or two that mm. are on TV. But uh, now they they signed on with a lot of uh, you know TV channels. You got them on TBS, True TV, TNT, um, and I think that's it, right? CBS. Yeah, and it, the it obviously the networks get smaller as. Yeah. The rounds, you know, advance. It'll yeah, stick it, to your CBS. It'll end up being your CBS. Yeah. But, um, they also have an app that has the yes. uh, the games all together. Um, you can watch them on the game uh, on your on your phone. A CBS Sports app. And you're also saying with the it has a thing for your bracket. Yeah, you if you want to do bracket. that. If you want to follow your bracket, you can pick your teams on that, uh, and it'll come up on your phone. So you know, definitely check those out if you're into uh, you know 
March Madness. And you know, I, yeah, it's just live TV, you know, right on the go. There's nothing better. Yeah, there's nothing better than, I mean, the, the bracket is just, it's too, it's too much fun. It is. You know, when you're, when you got your teams, you got your bracket all set up, you know, it, and then in the same time, it could be a heartbreaker because, you know, you can have a team that's in, mm-hmm. and that's your winner and ends up I was riding upset. Ole Miss last year, yeah. so I think it was the Elite Eight I had them Yeah, in. I think so. And they lost in the Sweet 16, 16 yeah. so, you know, it yeah. happens, but that was no, my actually, team last year. I think you had them in the Final Four, bro. I think I might have, yeah. Yeah. I think you had them in the Final Four, and, then and that's why it screwed 16, you. Yeah. yeah. So Well, last year, I, I lost, I think, three of my Final Four teams. And that's, that's the beauty of the tournament yeah. right there, is you just never know, and that's why... You kind of have to stay away from the favorites and sometimes yeah. because you get too drawn into that, that number one seed. You know, you think they're so much better than everyone else. Yep. But more than anything this year is that this is so even. Yeah. You know, this is going to be one of the best tournaments, I think. Absolutely. And also don't uh, don't get too crazy on your sleepers also because that, yeah, don't, I mean. Don't be like me and uh, put uh, Ole Miss in it the end final up, four. It, it could end up biting you. I mean, if, if you – guess right hey more power to you because you you just you know pretty much beat everybody i almost uh, feel like going like on jersey colors on some of these you know you know that's what we said you know all the yeah. time that it's those people that don't know anything that's about what, yeah, it yeah i want to be a little mix it up a little yeah. bit here you know maybe exactly. a couple eyes closed or something <laughs> so i gotta mix i gotta do something different yeah. you know or have frisky uh oh you know, that's a good one yeah <laughs> <laughs> I might do that actually. Tom's cat's name is Frisky. I'll put, some, uh, I'll put treats on the team. Yeah. Whatever treats he takes. That's, yeah. a, that's a good one. That's good. <laughs> Yo, you see? I mean, you see it with the Super Bowl. You see it with uh, you know other teams. I might, that, I'm gonna know. Frisky's so. picking my <laughs> picking my tournament, I guess. Yeah, but uh, that will do it for our show. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be back. You know, keeping an update on uh, the yes. tournament. So uh, April seventh will be the championship in Texas at uh, AT and T Stadium, Jerry's World. Surprise, so, surprise. Yeah. He's making more money. <laughs> uh, but that'll do it. I'm Jerry. And I'm Tom. Be breezy. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Tom and Jerry Show. 